Hello. Welcome to Story Hour with Miss Barbara. Who would ever forget a name like Ichabod Crane? Why, even I can remember that one. But according to the files of one late Diedrich Knickerbocker, another unforgettable name, as Washington Irving, the author of the iconic Halloween story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, writes, 30 years before, one Ichabod Crane resided in the sleepy but haunted town of Sleepy Hollow around the time of the Revolutionary War, so late 1700s. And here is his story. As best as I could piece it together from the files of Diedrich Knickerbocker and the pen of Washington Irving. Now, Ichabod Crane was a young school teacher, babysitter, singer, scholar. Oh, a man of many talents. But remember, young. And he lived in Sleepy Hollow but he was really from Connecticut. So he was an outsider. And he was their resident school teacher and taught singing lessons on the side, I might add. But as he had no residence of his own, he boarded around for, as part of his pay. You might say that Ichabod Crane was a poor scholar, but he had ambitions and plans. One of the richest landowners and an important citizen of the town was Mr. Van Tassel. And he had a beautiful daughter. Katrina was as flirtatious as she was beautiful. So she had hundreds of bows but the number one contender, and he scared away all the rest, was the, the top man of the town, um, Abraham Van Burton, better known to everyone by his nickname, Brom Bones. His horse, Daredevil, who he was the only one who dared ride him, who was strong and fast, could often be seen outside the stately home of Katrina on Sunday afternoons. But Mr. Ichabod Crane was undaunted. He had visions of being married to Katrina. And after they sold her estate, she was an only child, he thought they could go to the frontier to live. Now, part of Crane's, and he was tall and slim, but his stomach seemed to be a bottomless pit, as those who boarded him soon found out. But part of Mr. Crane's strategy was that he would teach singing lessons to Katrina and thereby have a chance to be alone with her two days a week. Well, Brahm did not take this threat lying down. Oh, no, he and his friends played uh, pranks and all kinds of tricks on Ichabod Crane. For example, they would stuff the chimney of the schoolhouse so that smoke billowed out into the room when he lit the stove early in the morning. And one time, Mr. Crane came to the schoolhouse to find that all the furniture was upside down. But Brahms' best prank 
was to ridicule the singing teacher's singing. And he did that by giving Katrina, gifting her, a dog that he had trained to howl whenever Ichabod Crane sang. But, like I said, Ichabod Crane was undaunted. And then, one autumn afternoon, invitations went out. Ichabod Crane got one, as did everyone in the town, to a dance party at the Van Tassels. Oh, those lucky students. They all got to go home early, for Mr. Crane had to get ready for the party. And soon he was riding a borrowed horse by the name of Gunpowder, who was blind in one eye and practically lame, just an old plow horse, with his hair slicked back and in his best suit. Well, it was his only suit. And the stirrups were a little too short, so the rider looked rather like a, a grasshopper as he rode along. But his heart was merry. And his face got redder and merrier as he strayed near the food tables, enjoying the luscious repast. Another favorite part of the party was singing round the piano, and oh, he sang his best and his loudest. And he was even seen dancing with Katrina, much to Brahms' disgust. But Ichabod's favorite part was sitting round the fire in the, in the evening, telling stories. And as usual, the stories drifted to ghost stories. And Ichabod Crane shared his ghostly stories of when he walked home from a schoolhouse in the evening and got some spine tingling moments. But the one that raised his goosebumps the most was the story of the headless horseman who was known to be buried in the church graveyard. And on nights, he could be seen by some witnesses riding through the town on his horse without his head, which had been shot off by a cannonball in the Revolutionary War. But he carried it on his saddle, and he'd be riding through the town reliving his great adventure. And then Brahm would chirp up and say, Oh, me and Daredevil, we raced that headless horseman. We were winning too, until after we got across the bridge, he suddenly disappeared. For that was part of the legend. He always disappeared on the other side of the bridge and went back into his grave. Well, the time came for Ichabod Crane's big moment. He, this was going to be the night. And he finally had a chance to be alone with Katrina. Now, how their conversation went, I'm not privy. But the people at the party say that he left with a dejected slump. In fact, they even whispered to each other. She was just stringing him along to make Brahm jealous. So, unfortunately, Mr. Crane wasn't really paying much attention to his ride home. In fact, he was urging his horse, his poor old horse, gunpowder, and he went off the cliff, off the, off the um, bank at one point, and as Ichabod got up to get back on his mount. He looked back and he could see a horseman approaching. So he got on and he urged his mount to go up, to go faster. But he could hear the foot hoof prints following closer and closer. 
Finally, he dared to look back, and it was the headless horseman, carrying his head in his lap. He was horror-stricken. He tried to urge his mount on as fast as he could, hoping to get across the bridge, but it was useless. He was hopeless. Daring once more to look back, he saw that the horseman was holding his head aloft. He was going to throw it. Ichabod Crane turned around and hunched down, but he felt it thump hit his back, and that's the last he remembered. They say that gunpowder came home that night riderless. The next morning, they went to investigate. No sign of Ichabod Crane. There was his hat, and there was a smashed pumpkin. And no one saw nor heard of him in that town again. Yes, Brahm went on to marry Katrina. And whenever anybody would tell the story of the strange disappearance of Ichabod Crane, when they get to the part about the finding the smashed pumpkin, Brahm would laugh and laugh. But then, many years later, there came a visitor to the town. And when he heard the story about the strange disappearance of Ichabod Crane, he said, hmm, funny thing. Back in New York, where city where I'm from, there's a, a lawyer, successful, banker, politician, writer, judge, who goes by the name of Ichabod Crane. And that's my version of the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Thanks for listening.